Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. Good to see you uh, again, and I look forward to our visit together to West Virginia in June, and thank you for agreeing to do that. I appreciate that. I'm going to follow up on a topic we've talked about. I think it's about 13 months now, and that is the uh, the EPA's involvement in developing the, U, uh, the U.S. nationally determined contribution target. Uh, since we Since you testified in April, we did receive some documents, and thank you for that. Um, so the, your staff had also agreed to schedule a briefing so uh, that has not been scheduled yet. So I'm asking you to please have that briefing scheduled as soon as we can with my staff. Okay. And, and is that briefing on? On the materials that were submitted. Okay. The other question on those materials, um, there was information um, I, that uh, I, I think there was a feeling that maybe not all of the information was brought forward. You had previously said that EPA provided qualitative information about our regulatory and voluntary programs and discussed approaches to quantitative analysis. So in the materials, um, we didn't see any of that quanti uh, quantitative analysis. And I'm wondering, um, uh, did we get all the materials? I mean, are you satisfied that you've presented all the materials to our, uh, to our staff that we have been requesting? I, uh, I, I am. I, I posed this question just yesterday. And my, <laughs> you knew staff, you'd see me, right? <laughs> my staff knows how serious I am about being responsive to your request. And so to the best of my knowledge, you all have all of the materials that we have. Okay. Then I look forward to the briefing. I think that will help us understand more some of the data. I think there was some questions as to how the data was, was uh, presented. Okay. Um, I, I did ask you, and this is a question, and there's been a couple articles about you're asking for 1,000 more uh, employees in this budget. Uh, how many people are presently full-time at EPA? We have, uh, let me get you an accurate number here. We have right now 14,000, about 14,824 employees. Okay. As okay. So the, the 1,000 would take you up to 16,200. So you're not even at your full capacity right now? At, yes, our FY23 budget requests uh, would support right around 16,000. Right, so you're still, you're still shot. You're still not hiring in to the max that you have from last year quite yet. You must not be because 1,000 would be 15 two. So yes. you're- we're still hiring. 600 yes. people shy of your, of your max. Are all of those people back in the office and working post-pandemic? Yes, we our, our return to work strategy was, uh, it began February 28th, our political appointees and senior agency leadership returned. Beginning March 28th, our managers and our non-bargaining staff returned. Um, so we're still, we worked extensively with our unions, uh, still working with our unions, but um, you know, we are, in the coming weeks, all of our EPA employees will be fully phased into what we're calling our new schedules. Yeah, and your new schedule for some people includes fully remote work, right? Yes. According to an article yeah, yes. that I read. And then also coming in one day every two weeks, another. We, yes, we have a range. So this of is not actually everybody coming in. It's a, it can be a blended system, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, I had a meeting yesterday with some energy folks, and um, you've been you, in your confirmation, and I think every time you've been in front of all of our committees, uh, and I think you've, you've exhibited this in certain instances, you've pledged to have all stakeholder uh, involvement, to listen to everybody uh, before making a decision, knowing that you're not going to please everybody in the room. And there was a general feeling within, this is related to pipelines and natural gas development, that uh, they have made numerous requests to EPA to, uh, to be a stakeholder, to have their positions heard. The, I, I think we all see what's happening in Europe. We know that uh, the um, uh, reliance on our own natural, our own uh, energy resources and an all of the above energy plan, uh, and we're, we're feeling, I think most of us in energy states, feeling as though uh, that's not really moving forward through the administration with some of the pipelines that have been canceled. I have an MVP pipeline in West Virginia that has had some huge difficulties, even though it's 95% complete. Um, I just want to ask for your pledge again that folks in the energy industry have an ability to come knock on your door and actually have their side of the story heard. I think they're doing a lot to uh, uh, reduce their emissions and have uh, on the methane side and other side. I know you're getting ready to do a methane rule. 
Um, I, I sense some frustration with them. Uh, I don't. Do you publish who you meet with, and um, ha have you had meetings with uh, folks in that industry around the methane rule? Yes, we're fully transparent with who I meet with and who staff meets with. And yes, I've met with uh, uh, leadership from the power sector, the oil and gas sector. I was down in Houston at a CIRA conference meeting with executives around all of the potential for methane capture and the like. And so if there is a frustration, I'd love to get that from you and your staff, but um, it's my understanding and personal experience that we are meeting with all of our stakeholders. Well, I'll circle back with them and make sure that that's the, uh, uh, that, that your door is open and that yes. you're willing to meet with them. Okay. Um, maybe it's just not this particular, these were a whole variety of different people and I was sort of frustrated by that. Um, on the Justice 40 issue, um, I've tried to like dig deep into that to see it's pledged that 40% of the funding that is, is, is going is going to go to justice communities. Are you quantifying that? I mean, is there a website that we can go to that, that's going to show me where and how this pledge of 40% is actually being translated into different communities in Alaska or West Virginia or Mississippi? Yeah, I think that, so the, the Justice 40 initiative obviously is being quarterbacked out of the White House. and So, so who would we go to at the White House? Uh, the Center for Environmental Quality, um, Brenda uh, Mallory's right. shop. Okay. And as, all, as agencies, we're all participating in pilot projects to, to demonstrate how to do this. So let me give you a couple examples. With the bipartisan infrastructure law, the $5 billion for Superfund brownfields, as we put that money out, you know, we've, we've got... Uh, more than 50 or 60 percent, I'll get you the right number, that goes to disadvantaged communities. When we look at our- Are you using the screening tool that the CEQ put together? No, we have our, we have our own screening tool. Is and it different than CEQ? I think that there are some differences, and EPA's had an environmental justice screening tool for decades. Uh, we've also are, are very well versed in environmental justice. We're one of the agencies that's been doing this for a number of years. And some of this is actually built into our programs, like with the state revolving loan funds, 49% of our dollars have to go to disadvantaged communities. So EPA has some built-in infrastructure that really does a good uh, uh, evaluation of where our resources actually go. So we are using ourselves as pilot projects for the Justice 40 initiative as some of that's been built out. And then out. you feed that up to CEQ. That's right. Are we, you satisfied you're reaching the 40 percent? Um, I'm very satisfied with the focus that my uh, agency has given to environmental justice and equity issues. And when I look across my programs, uh, numbers matter to me, data matters, fairness and equity and transparency matters. Uh, with our state revolving loan fund program, with our brownfields and super fund, we're doing an excellent job making sure that the people that need these resources the most are actually getting the resources. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Capito. Senator Reed. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and welcome, Mr. Administrator. 